Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. going on ladies and gentlemen this is the truth seeker podcast i'm your host truth seeker thank you guys for joining us today we got an awesome podcast lined up give a shout out to everybody holding us down in the chat room right now chat room's filling up this morning thank you guys for catching us live also to let everybody know if you guys want to get in on the conversation the phone lines will be open the number streaming across the top of the platform and it's also in the description so if you uh, feel challenged by some of the information that's brought forth today or if you if you agree with it you just want to say hello or maybe you need prayer or something like that we definitely want to make ourselves available for that got an awesome show planned for you guys today so uh, if you guys want to be a part uh, the opportunity is there I want to say thank you to everybody supporting my work and and uh, helping me to be able to do this and bring content and, and discussion on spiritual topics that in many of the churches are overlooked. And so a lot of times we start talking about this stuff when we get shunned or uh, we get this, this new term that came out. It's called ghosting. It's like excommunication, but you're not told that you're excommunicated. They just tell people to stay away from you, not to talk to you and things like that. I mean, we see that with Rob Bell and stuff like that early on. Some of these people that bring a different type of, um, realm of thinking to the table when it comes to Christianity or, or, or church culture in general. So uh, we have a safe platform here where we're able to discuss that stuff. So thank you guys for supporting my work. If you guys want to do that, you can head on over to patreon.com backslash truth seeker and uh, sign up for any level of giving per month, anywhere from a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever you're able to do. There's extra podcasts, there's exclusive interviews, uh, new music. My entire discography is uploaded there. 10 plus albums, as well as every time I get done with a new song, I upload it there. I'm almost done with my next album entitled Seer, and uh, it will be available on Patreon. Most of you guys have already heard it who are supporting. So thank you guys for coming out the woodwork to support uh, what I'm doing. It means the world to me. Thank you guys. Patreon.com backslash Truth Seeker. Uh, this podcast is going to be a special one for me because... I feel like this is an important one. I feel like it's a, a heaven or hell issue, you know? And so uh, that's what I posted on Facebook and everybody's like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Heaven or hell issue? Uh, that's the content. That's what we're talking about. We're going to be talking about heaven and hell. And so um, what is hell? Uh, what is our, our view of it? Um, my view has changed drastically over the years and it's still evolving. And may, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's a bad thing. I don't know, but we're going to we're going to get into some uh, questions and, and, and things about hell. I have questions. And so I'm going to be joined today by my guest, Tom Shannon. He's a pastor at Restored Life Church. He's also a uh, academic success specialist and counselor at Mott Community College. Tom Shannon, welcome to the podcast, brother. Thanks, Derek. Great being here. Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, the, the intro, man, uh, a heaven or hell issue, right? 
Amen. Yep. It's true. So, um, and uh, yeah, the big thing with heaven and hell, you know, so many people make it out to be a destination and the destination a place. And it's never been about a place. It's been about a person. It's been about Jesus having an intimate relationship with him. And so that, I think that essentially is heaven or hell, right? Heaven on earth or hell on earth. I think separation yeah. from God, um, being yeah. in this uh, uh, a conscious state of being away from God or being an enemy of God in your mind, as the scripture says at times, that's a that's a state of hell. I've been there. I've been to the bottom and I've, I've lived to talk about it. And um, when we look at the scriptures, as far as the scriptures are concerned, I look at the Old Testament and the only mention of hell I see is this state of consciousness. It's like this being away from God. Uh, King David's praying, asking God to deliver his soul out, out of hell where he is now, this present moment. Um, I don't see it as an eternal place of damnation or, or, or um, torment where you're going to be beaten and, and burned forever. What, what's your take on hell and when it's coming from the, the Old Testament as well? Well, I have about 200 pages of notes that I've compiled in all my research, so I haven't taken this lightly. Nowhere in the Old Testament does it mention that hell is a place of eternal torment. Uh, it talks about Sheol, which is the grave or place where departed spirits go waiting. And uh, when I look at the New Testament, Jesus went down there and he emptied it out and he took the keys with him. So that's pretty good news. Uh, it talks about uh, whoever, which is the hole in the ground where people go. It talks about... Uh, ben Hinnom, which we call Gehenna. And uh, if you look at Jerusalem right now, that place is a park. It was a place of judgment in this life. Nowhere is there an eternal judgment mentioned in Old Testament scripture. It's a fabrication of translators. And you think this is something that the early, the early church uh, taught and believed that, um, that, you know, that there was no um, uh, eternal punishment. I, I see it as, I think it was Carlton uh, Pearson who uh, checked out some of his work early on in, in my, in my spiritual journey. And he, he was uh, talking about sharing the gospel because people talk about it. Well, if there is no hell, there's no reason for us to share the gospel. And so I, I heard Carlton Pearson talk about it. It's like, we, we share the gospel from a place of victory, not that Jesus might forgive you or if you're good enough, or if you ask him to, he'll forgive you. No, the gospel is declaring the wonderful works of Jesus. He's already forgiven you. You're already set free. You need to come to the knowledge and revelation of that. Is that kind of how you see it? That is definitely it. One sacrifice covered all sin for all times. In the Old Testament, when you look at the concept of sacrifice, a sinner brought a lamb to the priest. The priest didn't really give a rip about the person presenting it. They looked at the lamb to see if the lamb was a perfect lamb for sacrifice. Jesus is a lamb that was slain for the sins of the world, not just Christians. One sacrifice forgave all sins for all time. So where's the urgency to get the gospel out there to, to, to people if, if there is no recompense for sin, if you don't have to pay for your sins, in, whether it's in this life or the life to come? Where, I mean, where do you stand on that? Well, I've been raised in church pretty much all my life. I'm uh, just about 60 years old, when I was 18, I became a born-again Christian, uh, converted into Pentecostalism, so I was <laughs> way out there. Heck yeah. Uh, <laughs> Praise I, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even graduated from an Assemblies of God Bible College. So, But um, where I'm at right now, what I realize, when I encountered the truth of God's grace, that he has forgiven all my yeah. sin, that I've never been his enemy. He's always been seeking me out. All my life as a Christian, I lived through hell. I got set free yeah. when I realized I was forgiven of everything. He has been forgiven loves little, but he has been forgiven much loves mm, much. Good. People would, would take that and, and say, okay, that's dependent upon your testimony. You was a drug addict. You, uh, you know, did all you, you used to rob and beat people up and you got this big list of things you've been forgiven much. So therefore you're going to kind of walk with this little chip on your shoulder because you've been forgiven much and you love much, but that's, you know, that, that's universal. That's for everybody who's been forgiven, right? Exactly. For everyone. That's, that, that, that's the beautiful thing when it, when it comes to un understanding grace. And it's and like I said, uh, coming from a place of victory, I think my revelation of, of hell kind of changed as far as when, when I was living a lifestyle of hell, when I embodied hell on earth and I, I come out of like deep, dark witchcraft and Satanism. So I was doing a lot of crazy stuff. So um, I would have nightmares and um, that I was going to die. And right before I, I would 
die, uh, I would ask God to forgive me. And I think a lot of people have that notion that on my deathbed, I'm going to ask for forgiveness in that 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 second. Um, I'm going to be forgiven. And I'm going to be granted access into the kingdom of heaven if, if I can get the timing down. Right. And so I would have uh, nightmares of, of, of torment and things like that, that I was going to die. And it was like it was on, it was on the cusp of. Um, but I mean, I was living hell on earth. So it was it was co- coming to a, you know, a point. So. Uh, but on this side, that was that was probably in uh, in, in uh, early 2000s when when I, when I gave my heart back to Christ and uh, all that stopped. But understanding the teachings of the church and the charismatic church, Pentecostal and even the, the Baptist, I think the majority of evangelicalism believes that. But being so far removed from my sin as far as openly loving to sin and indulging in my sins and, 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 and where they, I didn't, I wasn't walking in grace. Um, the further I get from that point, the more this concept of hell vanishes or my loving God who spared my life would want to torment any entity, any living soul in, in a lake of fire for all eternity that he would do that to people i can't fathom that anymore because i've seen his grace and i've seen his love and i didn't do anything to deserve it that's the thing it it was freely given to me but someone who didn't acknowledge it the same way that i did um he's going to torment those people for all of eternity my mind can't fathom that anymore that's why i want to have this conversation yeah yeah it's um Why, for 70 years of life on earth, would God want to punish us for eternity? It, ju- it just makes no sense, and that's not a God of love. What I came to realize with embracing grace, he forgave all my sins. Then the next rational progression of thought is, if he's forgiven all my sins, what's there left to be punished for? Mm-hmm. He forgave every single one of them, past, present, and future. When Jesus died, all my sins, all your sins, were future sins. And he can't be sacrificed again. So mm-hmm. we're out of luck, all of us, if we don't embrace this. Yeah. He died to set us free. And that's what the, that's what the gospel is, just pro- proclaiming the work, not that he's going to do, but he's already done, yeah. past tense, for everybody. Yeah. To me, I believe uh, scripture is very clear. We've all humanity has been reconciled to him. And what I believe salvation is, is when we come to the realization of that and we embrace our reconciliation. You got a bunch of scriptures here. You made a posting. We're part of a group called um, Rethinking Hell on Facebook. And that's where I seen your posting there. And it was beautiful. Um, and I, I saved it for, for this conversation. I reached out to you after I read it. And um, the, 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 the first part of it, you say, uh, it said, it's amazing how many cars there are out there just like yours. You just never realized it until you bought your vehicle. And I had just bought a new vehicle and uh, and it's not the vehicle that I bought that I'm seeing everywhere. It's the one that I didn't buy. Like we had our eyes on another one, but we see that car everywhere. I'm like, I'm glad we didn't buy that car. It's everywhere, you know. So it's 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 this realm of consciousness. If you haven't been on, on this side of grace, especially this far and had it applied to you and knowing that you did nothing. That's the thing. Like people like to boast in their works. And what does it, I think it's uh what, I know it's in um, Galatians and Ephesians that said that that our salvation is of faith. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. We can boast in our works. We can boast on you know what we did or what we've accomplished or we're a man of wisdom or we, we we've studied the scriptures enough so God had decided to even use us because we're, we we've reached this level. But it's a grace that's freely given and freely received. Amen. Amen. That's what it is. Um, you got you got a bunch of scriptures here too. Do, do you want to go over any of those? Because um, I've you got a ton of them. I've copied them all down. Um, some of them that are uh, kind of uh, obscure, um, but but they talk about how uh, let's see, Jesus saved the world, uh, no more sin. You know all of these things. You want to discuss any of these scriptures that were kind of like the kind of like the defining ones? I know we can't go over all of them, but it was any any of the ones that are kind of like defining for you. Well, a few big things for me. One is a church definition of sin, and this is a whole other topic in itself. What Grace teaches me is it's not about what I do, but it's about what he's done. The whole theme of the New Testament is about repentance. The meaning of repentance, metanoia in the Greek, it means to change the mind. 
Now, the church, and what I've heard with grace preachers as well, they focus on behaviorism when they start talking about <laughs> sin. You know, eating an apple didn't send man to hell, and also in Genesis it never mentioned hell. It, no mention of that. It said the day you eat of it, you'll surely die. It wasn't a punishment. It was just a natural cause and effect. But to me, sin, Jesus said a man uh, sins when he lusts after a woman in his mind. Sin begins in the mind. Mm -hmm. I know from all the years working as an addiction counselor, yeah. a person, yeah. uh, a person uh, fell off the wagon when they started thinking about it in their mind first. It wasn't with the action. And uh, sin began when man thought he was not like God and God wasn't like who he was. And so it's that whole false concept there that it, Jesus said the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. It was that faulty concept that he came to restore, that we are like God. We're in his image. We're in his likeness. And so I think that's an important place to start with this. Yeah, that is that, that is a good place. I've heard it said that, um, you know, that the, the serpent in the garden uh, with the whole sin issue is not that you will be like God. Like that was the lie because right. you already were. Amen. He convinced yep. him of something that he was, we talk about the devil and Satan and the only power he has is to lie and to manipulate. He has no power other than that. Unless whatever God gives him, he has to be obedient. So to, to take the truth and bend it and to manipulate it and to lie to people. I mean, I thought, I thought that was beautiful when I heard it for the first time. Yeah, that is exciting. And you know, the thing you, we talked about the old Testament, the old Testament has to say, we'll look at the new Testament, uh, it talks about uh, Hades, which is the equivalent of Sheol. It talks about uh, Gehenna, which is the park outside of Jerusalem today. also talks about the Lake of Fire. And to me, I can remember, I don't know if you've ever heard of Jeff Turner. He's uh, written, uh, written a couple books. Atheistic Theist is his latest one. Pretty wild mm -hmm. stuff. He lives near me. But uh, I was leery about having him in our church because he didn't believe in hell. And at that point, about three years ago, I still did. And I was warning people of him. He's a good guy, but you have to be careful with <laughs> this. But, you know, I started reading in Matthew 25, the parable of the sheep and the goats. And Jesus said to those on his left, the goats, depart from me, workers of iniquity, into the lake of fire prepared for his angels. And I thought, well, that seals it. But then I made the mistake of going on. And it talks about eternal punishment. First of all, the word eternal, eon in the Greek, it means an age of time. It doesn't mean forever. It can mean forever, but it just means an age. The reign of Caesars were eons. And it talks about an age of punishment. The word punishment there, coliasis in the Greek, when you look at it, it refers to pruning. It's derived from the word to prune. And actually, lexicon upon lexicon that I looked at, it said punishment with the intent of bettering the offender. The lake of fire is about bettering someone. <laughs> it's not about torment and the fire it is. It's a fire of his love. It's burning away the chaff, yes, the yes. false self image of who we are until we embrace, until we let go. It's God's love wooing us into his presence where we respond. Essentially, <laughs> what it talks about in, in, in um, Corinthian, Corinthians is giving a brother over to Satan. Let Satan have him for a little while. He's going to come running back. Give him over to, to you know the things that are enticing him. He'll see that once he's tasted of his disgrace, it's impossible to go back. And I think that's the the, the, the same essence of the of, of the situation is that you know all things work together to kind of buffet you and to chastise you. So this eternal punishment or this punishment for a, uh, an age or a, se a season we definitely go through seasons in our life so you think that this is a this punishment is talking about is something that we're experiencing on the earth or is that once we pass i think uh it's once we pass i mean we definitely go through something like that on earth as well we can um we most definitely do i don't want to be around other people i'm focused on myself what's going on with me i don't want to be loved uh nowhere in scripture does it say that one cannot accept god after death there's one scripture we go on it is uh, a destined for man once to die and then face the judgment. Word judgment doesn't mean hell. We automatically see fire. We think hell. We see judgment. We think hell. The word judgment there, krenos, krema, the family of words, it means to render a decision. You go to court, a judge doesn't send any reverend to jail. I mean, well, there's a favorable judgment. I'm favorable. It's a separation of the bad from the good. It's his purification. 
So many times when we think of fire, we automatically think of hell, about judgment, damnation. But when we look at fire in the Old Testament, anything that was defiled, if it could pass through the fire like wood or like metal or stone, it was passed through the fire to be purified. The refiner's fire. The baptism of fire. Yeah, yeah all those things. And then the thing that really blew me away is when you look at Daniel 7, it talks about the Ancient of Days. And that's referring to God. He's sitting on a throne of fire. Yeah. There's a river of fire coming out from underneath this throne. And then you see saints, they're on the banks of that river, worshiping him in that fire. His eyes are fire. God's not in hell. That's the fire of his love. And then when we go to Revelation 14, we see God sitting on a throne of fire again, and sinners are on that fire. It's a fire of his love. What, however long it takes, he's going to love us into receiving him. I've heard it, I've heard it put, um, I've heard it called the grace flood. That mm -hmm. is just kind of by default. Jesus died for everyone. Everyone gets in on this. Um, and there's there, there's certain scriptures that kind of that kind of stand out where he says that every knee will bow and yeah. every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Right. Um, yeah. That every I'm sure that means everyone, everyone. You know what I'm saying? No matter where you are, whether you're in a place of torment for a time or a place of purging for a time, there will come a point where where you are ushered back to the one who created you. I, b I believe that. I don't, like, I, don't, I don't know the logistics behind it. There's a lot of uh, obscure um, uh, books that were taken out of the, the scriptures where I know it's uh, the, apo uh, the, the Apocrypha of Peter, I think it is, or Apocalypse of Peter, where he talks about this season you go through and the things that you'd have done on the earth, uh, you're given over in, into the, the hands of those spirits once you die and they buffet you for seasons and things like that. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. I know that on, on, on this realm of existence on planet Earth, um, that God chastises those he loves and he uses those. He uses everything, every like he's sovereign. We understand the sovereignty of God. That's the good, the bad, the ugly, the rejection, the hurt. God uses all of it for his glory and to to to, to make build character within us and um we look at so many scriptures in the Old Testament where God sent forth evil spirits because he wanted something done on the earth or he wanted to to put something on, uh, you know, King Saul's heart. Or we look at the Apostle uh, Paul where uh, a, a minister of Satan was sent to buffet him and in a spirit of infirmity. God uses this for his glory. And so uh, to understand the sovereignty of God, he uses everything. And that that's part of just stepping back from what we've been told. It's like, OK, there is a war between God and Satan. And if there's a war, then you think that Satan or the devil thinks that he could win this war? Like, does he really think that it, he and his angels are going to overthrow God? I don't I don't think that to be the case. And so um, being able to step back and to look at everything as a whole, you see you really do see how all things work together, all of it. Yep, amen, amen, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, so when when we're we're talking about hell, um, there's there's a couple of questions that, that or just things that that stood out to me. And the thing is, if we're studying psychology, I know you're a counselor. Um, why do people want others to go to hell? There's almost this inward, God's gonna get you. Uh, maybe because you disagree with me, there's people who can't wait for God to judge homosexuals, um, people who have alternate lifestyles, people who practice witchcraft, whatever the case is. Like these people are looking forward for the judgment of the wicked and they, they there's an inward desire for these people to go to hell. Isn't that something? It, it, it is something that's sad. And uh, one of the things I came to realize doing addiction groups um, in my 20 years of working uh, inpatient uh, psychiatric addictions, it always amazed me with addicts how when they were talking, what really upset them the most was that Joe Blow sitting next to him or their neighbor, not next to him, but their neighbor could drink as much as they wanted to stop at any time and they couldn't. Yeah, it was a jealousy. And I really think with a lot of people, it's like, man, I'm really trying to live a good life, yeah. but I can't. But you're not. And God's going to get you. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It really is. I've seen that uh, just studying how 
Uh, I'm part of a, a you know a few different like fringe Christian circles and stuff, and and there's just different leaders and and this stuff. I don't know if you ever heard of John Crowder, some of those oh, yeah. th th those people, and and you would think that the people who were on the fringe would band together and say, okay, we are the outcasts, we're the the, the lost sheep or whatever, um, but they they all fight each other of trying to get followers and trying to prove their doctrine, and they call each other out all the time. Um, for like, you know, stay away from him because of this, stay away from him because of that. And I've understood the spirit behind that is, is usually not because you care for the flock and you really are scared that people are going to get poisoned by the doctrine. You, you want to make that person look bad inwardly because it makes you look better. And there's so there's so much of that going on. And, and, um, and, and, you know, church cu culture and Christendom and, uh, and, and you understand the spirit behind it. So, like people are, they they have they have this. Uh, and so anytime somebody talks bad about somebody or, or puts them down, it's usually a deep rooted ulterior motive of they have their own insecurities. People won't accept me. People will flock to this person. And when I say per person or people, I'm talking about doctrines as well. You know, I used to be one. I, I call I called it doctrine banging as well. You know, I come from, uh, you know, the, the Christian circles. We did we did gospel hip hop for years and uh. And there would be people who would depart from us uh, because we were charismatic and they got into the reformed theology and and everybody wanted their doctrine to be right. So they would quiz each other on doctrine and they were like looking for something that set them apart. Oh, you believe you believe in the Trinity? We can't be seen with you. We can't be on stage with you. And it got really m meticulous. And it's like, man, this isn't this isn't what, what, what the gospel is supposed to be about. And I just see all of this going on and just debates and who's right. And, and, uh, I think it comes down to a point for me, even what we're doing, I think it's healthy because, um, there's so many people who are confused. They've been told one thing they're in, in fear of hell. I know people who have been living for Jesus for years and they're still scared that they're in danger of hellfire. Like, and, and the scripture says that we can be sure of our salvation and, ha and have a, uh, assurance of, of w what's going to happen, you know? So I think it's healthy, but it comes a point to where we have to stop, debating over the scriptures and talking about them and things like that and just simply do it i like just simply do the things that jesus said do the work of the ministry show grace to those who don't deserve it show love to those who have never experienced love and that's that's the gospel that's becoming jesus to somebody on the earth and so um i do think it's healthy to talk about this because i've, I've seen this type of doctrine lead close friends of mine in this state of fear it's like brother if i make it if i'm faithful to the end it's like no, I don't. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that easy to lose your salvation or or whatever the case is. And so, that's been something that I, I've seen people struggle with over the years. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, I think when I look back at the early church, what set them apart? When you look at the Jews with the apostles when they were in the temple preaching, what set them apart was they perceived they had been with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus chose the 12, and before he chose them, he didn't sit down and say, okay, what's your uh, take on Trinitarian theology? <laughs> what's your take on hell? No, he chose 12 to be with him, and that's what it's about. And what I believe what God inaugurated in the garden with Adam's fall was the cosmos, which the cosmos is the fallen social order. And we receive the result of that. The blood of Abel cries out vengeance and justice, but the blood of Jesus cries out mercy. And we get focusing on our needs and our judgment. I believe it's Proverbs 29, 18. It says, for lack of vision, my people cast off restraint. And uh, growing up in uh, Pentecostal and restoration circles, I was always taught that, that talks about prophetic vision, about getting prophecies. But in reality, when I uh, looked at the Hebrew on that, it's talking about awareness in the five senses. For lack of awareness, my people perish. When we don't understand the true thing that's going on, you know, none of us believe totally 100% on everything. There's exactly. only one, and that's God. And I can rest assured in that. Yeah. And I know one thing, he does not want to torment his creation and hell for eternity, that he loves us, that he died so we do not have to endure any discomfort. And the discomfort that we have to endure, he's the bush or he's a fire in the bush that never is consumed. You know, if we go through the fire, the only reason things could pass through the fire is if they wouldn't be destroyed. If they were to be destroyed, they'd be passed through the water. Yep. That's a good thing. I, yeah. I, that's a good thing. The fire, like we were talking about, just is, 
it's a it's a cleansing fire it's a fire of of, of uh, purification to to actually burn away all the what the scripture says the wood hay and the stubble stubble and, and the chaff and the things that we're holding that we don't need to be holding and and so um going over some of these scriptures here there's another one you posted you said uh it's uh revelations 5 13 yeah. then i heard every then i heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth this is like covering it all for you yeah. like all like uh, uh shio the earth and then you know the heavenly realms uh, every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever amen this is every creature every tribe every tongue i think it's beautiful too man i, I get into like as far as opening up my, my research into other people groups and stuff and thinking that God's dealing with them with this same grace and they may call it something different. When I read the, 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 the prophecy um, that God would pour out his spirit on all flesh. But, but we're still with that. No, only the Christians or only my church or my denomination. And we 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 want to feel like we have a one up on somebody when we don't. There's nothing that we've done to deserve it. If anything, it was on the opposite of why we don't deserve it, you know. Yeah. What the church has made God out to be is a God of exclusion. Yeah. God is not a God of exclusion. He's a God of inclusion. When we look at John 17, Jesus prayer, father, let them be one as we are one. And he's talking about those who believe in the apostles message. When you look at the Greek there, it's in the perfect tense. It's not future like we interpret it. And what Jesus was saying, this was before the cross. They're already been made one. The problem is our realization. Of that we just need to realize the fact that it already is and i believe in scripture it talks about the restoration of all things mm -hmm. yeah all things are included one day every knee will bow i believe that even includes satan himself and all the fallen angels yeah guys yeah. draw everything together one day i i believe it um what, what would you call this if somebody's listening to this and they don't know what to call it? Because everybody wants to put something in box. I try to stay away from all the, the names and, and titles. I mean, you know, we, we hear the terms like universalist. Um, would you would you call yourself a universalist? Was that something that you would agree with? Or, or, no, do, I, or, or, or do they have doctrines that are included as a universalist that you disagree with as well? So you can't kind of go by that type of title. Universalism is a very broad term. It's just like an American. I mean, you look at me, you look at you, you've got tattoos, I don't. You've got plugs in yours, I think, I don't. I'm not into pain, so, but uh, I'm will. <laughs> but we're all different, yeah. you know, and universalism, there's so many different types. Christian universalism, that believes that all eventually will be saved, and it believes that all are already reconciled, but it also believes that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. And what we believe is that Jesus died for all. He forgave all. He reconciled all. He accepted all. It's already done. What separates us, we became enemies in our mind. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, That's big. And that's what I think the gospel is about. I think that's the urgency. People are, are, are dying. I don't think they're dying and going to hell. I think they're dying and in hell, you know, yeah. right now. And so um, we and pe people talk about like, well, you know, there is wicked in, in, in the earth. There is evil. And people uh, in the scriptures... Uh, actually rejected Jesus, but he's so beautiful to me. I don't, I don't see it possible if somebody was to, to see Jesus in his true light for who he is and what he is that anybody could resist him. Right. So I think that with, with this whole people rejecting the gospel or rejecting church culture or whatever, I think they're rejecting your representation of it. In, right. in a lot of cases. And so allow me to represent Christ, allow me to represent him to you and that he loves you. He doesn't judge you. Um, he, you know, by, I think by your lifestyle, you're kind of judging yourself living by default and all of these consequences that kind of come with what you're doing. That's the judgment here. You have yeah. to pay for every action. There's an equal or um, positive or negative reaction for everything that we do. And that's universal law. That, that, that Jew Gentile, uh, the scriptures talk about in Roman, how the, the uh, Romans, how the, the rain falls upon the righteous and the wicked, the just and the just that we all are, uh, susceptible to these laws, but it's under, un under the grace where we were able to know that 
There is power and there is authority. There is healing, forgiveness, restoration. He comes to make all things new. He opens doors that no man can can open. He shuts doors that that we've opened that we can't shut. And there's just a beauty in, in, in Christ. And so that's the that's the message of, of the gospel. I don't. Everybody who wants to go to hell, who wants to go to hell for all of eternity and burn in lake of fire. If that's if that's if that's the the debate, I don't think I think it's a win win s- situation. Nobody wants to do that, and that, so they they may be hard towards the church or hard hearted towards God because of some things that happened in their life. But who wants to to burn for all of eternity? Nobody. It's got to be something a little bit differently. I think I think it's uh, experiencing heaven on earth and experiencing the fullness of God here and everything that He has for us. And it's a I, I believe in I, I believe in the spirituality of the Bible. I believe that there's a regeneration of, 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 of you know, a, a death of one man and, and actually becoming born again and, and, and living this, this new life and to, to beckon men to come to that, to kind of throw off the old uh, nature and, and, and the sin that we've been carrying and the judgment that we've had from the world and from ourselves and identity crisis and all of this stuff. This is what the gospel is about for me. It is good news. The good news God's heart is that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. Yeah. Jesus loves the world, the land that loves the whole world. It doesn't say Christians. And Jesus said, if I'm lifted up, referring to the crucifixion, I will draw all to myself. Yeah. It doesn't say just men there. That's included. It's italicized. All. All negativity. I mean, I believe that includes all. It's everything. But the whole thing is, If Jesus died for all, and if his heart is to redeem all, if he even fails with not getting that one last lost sheep, he's the biggest failure of all time. He says says he forsook the 99. I mean, that's a good way to put it, that he's going after everyone. He's pursuing all of us. And when we look at the shepherd, he didn't stop till he found the lamb. When we look at the woman who lost the lost coin, she did not stop until she found the coin. When we look at the father, he did not stop looking until the prodigal comes home. God is an all-inclusive God. He died for one, just as all were included in Adam's transgression. Yep. It says even more are included in the last Adam, in Jesus. He's included us all. We just don't believe it. That's our problem. You know, I talk with, you know, in Pentecostalism, you know, by his stripes, we were healed. And I believe that the atonement was uh, for our healing as well. But how many Christians do we know that walk around in sickness? Yeah. It's not that Jesus hasn't healed you. It's that it's a space between the ears that's preventing it. The mind is so powerful. Um, when, I mean, it's so powerful. I, I even I even look at Jesus and, and him going into certain cities where they knew him. You know, they knew him as a child. They knew him as a teenager. And he's trying to heal people. And he couldn't. He, Jesus was. And this is hard for people to fathom. But this, we're talking about God's son or according to your doctrine, God on, on, on earth uh, rendered powerless to perform miracles and healings because of your doubt, fear and unbelief that just kind of canceled that out and kind of. You know what I'm saying? Um, nullified that whole thing. And the scripture says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so shall he be. The mind is the most powerful thing. And to really to really grasp it, what we, we keep touching on, we become enemies of God in our in our minds. It's that that moment. I've 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 went I've went back and forth on on, on so many issues over the years trying to find out who I was and, and what's what's my calling and is it is God calling me this way when the church is calling me that way, you know, those type of things. And you go back and forth and in an instant, you know, you, you know that, um, my heart is set out to go this route and it's not of God. And you feel the condemnation. If you're a child of God, if you can hear his voice, you can feel it instantly. Like, you know what, if I keep going down this road, it's not going to end well, go to where the peace is. And that's kind of part of being a son which is beautiful that we hear our father's voice and, and the stranger's voice we will not follow. It's all made up in, in, in the mind, becoming an enemy of God in, in, in the mind and uh, renewing your mind, things like this. Um, we're talking about atheism and we're talking about people who uh, are like looking at um, this grace or, or, or God and the Bible and Christ and salvation. Um, one of the 
ones that kind of put it in perspective for me. I don't know if you've seen this clip, but uh, there's a clip from George Carlin some years ago. Have you seen the the, the famous George Carlin clip where he's talking about um, uh, uh, God loves you? Uh, well, he's saying he's saying no. If 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 you're a sinner and you reject His Son, then you're gonna die. You're gonna be burnt for for all of eternity, and you're gonna be cast into the to, to the lake of fire where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. And he starts explaining hell. And then he says, "But He loves you." You know, it's like, oh my God! Like it really puts things into perspective, and that's what people claim to believe. But He loves you. He's gonna kill you if you don't accept Him. But He loves you. You know. Yeah, I remember several years ago, I teach classes at the college as well, on a multicultural communications course. And one of my students, she told me right at the beginning, she was an atheist. And I had a group of a lot of born again Christians in there. And they got very spiritual on the chapter on religion. And yeah, she had to work through a lot of discomfort. She came in and see me, but the thing that really hit me, talked about who God was all loving, all forgiving, and all embracing. And, you know, I asked her, I said, if you were to meet God, and if he was not like what all these people say is and what has been projected to you as, what would be your response to him? She was like, oh, no one's ever asked me that before. And she said, well, I guess I'd have to accept him because that's what I'm looking for. Her uh, brother they were kicked out of house, raised uh, in Catholic church, and the brother was transgendered. Mom kicked him out, so she went out and raised her little brother all this time. And she had to come back the next week, and she said, I shared the same thing with my little brother. And same response. But God's love. And uh, it's not, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if you don't answer, I'm going to kick your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kick the door down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's a gentleman. Yeah, yeah. He loves it, us. It's it's um it's beautiful. Like I said, like I I know I talked about this before we went live, but I come from the place of you know, the Christian debate and having to have the right doctrine on everything. And and that's the thing, even if you don't know, you have to pretend like you know because people want answers, you know. Um so I come from that 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 place of just debating people whether it's about heaven or hell or the trinity or if you're a Catholic or whatever the case is, and, and, and I've seen so much growth whenever I was uh, could be around Catholics and not tell them that they're in a false religion. And it was just something for me like, man, that's a lot of growth that I'm able to have a conversation with this guy and see him as a brother, see him as another seeker, somebody who's at this place for a, a, a certain period of time. Maybe he'll always be a Catholic. Maybe he won't be that for long. And whatever my, my, my feeling is or was towards that type of religion um but just to see him for who he was and appreciate him where he was at and not have to stay away from him hey watch out for that guy he's a catholic he's gonna try to get you to come worship mary like that was the approach but now i don't know if you want to call it a spiritual awakening awakening or just growing in wisdom and love and understanding but we don't you know the servants of the lord must not strive like there is no i don't have this inward thing to be right like i don't have this feeling to be right and it comes from christendom that we have to be right and uh but understanding just because i'm wrong i may be wrong on a lot of things but just because i'm wrong doesn't mean you're right and so that's that's the thing we're in this place now where there is no striving and it's just walking in love and walking in the spirit of, of love and, and and meeting people where they are i'm walking in a lot more peace i'm walking in a lot more grace um i'm enjoying life more it's a lot more more you know beautiful as trying to prove a point or, be, or 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 being right you as a pastor do you find yourself the you know the former or the latter or, or have you been in that in that you know teeter-totter seesaw action oh yeah i've been there i've been through it you know um there were many for quite a long time i go to the word and i i live a parsonage right behind the church i'd walk to church every sunday and that was the longest walk because i did not want to go there I pled with God, please show me some love, show me some hope. All I could see was condemnation. It was miserable. It's horrible to be in that spot when you look at other people and you judge them. Jesus set me free from that. What it all is, it's a mind issue. Yeah. And it's what identity we're in. Are we in the first Adam or are we in the last Adam, which is Christ? And what I believe 
1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world. God sent his son, Jesus, as a blueprint. Jesus is his blueprint, his declaration yeah. of who he declares us to be. Mm -hmm. That's what that's meaning. And we have to stop looking at ourselves and seeing all this yucky stuff. It's not about we're right and they're wrong. It's about he's right. And we're all moving <laughs> together towards him. That's what yeah. it's all about. There's a grace in that. There's a peace in that, man. I, and I just, I just urge people. I don't, I, I know, I know, I know my, my audience. I don't know if many of them are at that point, but I think a lot of them came from that point and it's a, a lot, you know, more easy going now, but man, it was, it was such misery there. And, uh, I don't know if I, I would have admitted it while I was in it. You know, I don't know if I, if I could have, could have said it now, but on this side, I'm able to look back and like, Thank God, you know, um, or even like pointing out all the evil in the world or studying the government or the Illuminati and just these different secret societies like that freaks people out. And, and they walk around with this consciousness that everything's evil, this evil. Oh, you know, they're, they're watching. Uh, there's people watching the Super Bowl halftime show not to uh, look at the art and the creativity and, you know, the, the talent that Justin Timberlake had, has or whatever. But they're looking for signs and symbols because there's a, a devil hiding behind every corner. And so it changes the way that you view the world. It changes the way that you uh, look at people. Somebody that comes up and say, hey, I'm a I'm a uh, I'm a Catholic. Well, you pray to Mary. OK. I know, I know people like you, you guys pray to Mary. Mary's the, the queen of heaven mentioned of in the book of Isaiah. You know that, right? It's a, fa a false goddess. You're into false goddess worship. Like, I used to be that. But yeah. now, man, um, I'm still a Christian. I'm still on fire for God. I'm still born again. Um, nothing's changed that. Nobody gave me that right except King Jesus, right? He's the one who opened up that grace flood for me and my flaws and my sins and my learning and unlearning. But, um, it's a it's a it's a grace flow. It's beautiful. And, and and what I have and what you have, it's available for everybody. Some people um, are are in a in a state of hell. They're in a state of confusion. They're in a, a, a state, a state of, uh, uh, you know, dysphoria and they want freedom. It's available for, for everyone. And I know you make yourself available. You're a pastor. You're a counselor as well. Give, give people your links, man, before we go. Just let uh, people know how they can, you know, if they have questions about this universal reconciliation and they want they want some scriptures. Most people dealing with Christians, they want scriptures. And I know you have them. So oh, yeah. I know we're just having a conversation and we're throwing some scriptures in there, but you actually have the teachings. I mean, I, that was me. If, if and, and still now, though, if I can find it in the Bible, I'll believe it. Like I try to filter everything through the scriptures, no matter what world, you know, belief it is or, or my own experience. I try to find it in there and it usually is. So uh, just kind of give your, your links out and stuff where people can can check out some more of your work. OK, great. Uh, the church Web page is restored all lowercase letters restored hyphen life hyphen church dot com and i have links to all my teachings my messages powerpoints there there's my email links there where you can contact me i am on facebook uh not sure how you look it up there i've never talked to people that way but uh, my email if you want to shoot me an email it's t shannon 5420 at gmail.com. And I'm more than happy to respond. You know, it's, it's, it's not about that we have to agree. It's that we're seekers of truth yeah. and the truth will set us free. And uh, he reveals, you know, I'm all open to changing my position. If I'm wrong, I don't want to live in falsehood and delusion. I've done that way too long. <laughs> I'm enjoying the life I'm experiencing and I know there's more. And that's what I'm shooting for. Amen. I, I'm, I, I agree with you. Um, I don't I don't have to be right. So uh, e even though I, I talk about that grace that we've experienced now, um, there's still like you can feel it when somebody says something that's different than what you believe and you want. to, But then you catch yourself. You're like, no, I'm going to just I'm going to just, you know, kind of walk a mile with this person. And so, um, you know, when, when the scriptures talk about those who are uh, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, it gives you long suffering and, and these different fruits and gifts of the spirit that help us win people over to the gospel. I think that we have what they're looking for. And if, and, and if we do, then what we're, we're walking in should be appealing to all men. And I think it is, I think, I think it is. I've had people on my show and I've been a guest on other people's show where they, I mentioned Jesus and they snicker and they laugh and things like that. But, um, I don't get mad. You know, I, they, they snicker for a reason, 
you yeah. got some of you guys may have been a false representation of Jesus. Maybe I have, you know, and and, and it makes them laugh. Yeah. But uh, like I said, I, allow us to represent Jesus, to represent Him to to yeah. people because He's irresistible to me. And so I think I think that He is for for a lot of people listening to this. Um, one last thing about hell, I wanted to kind of end on this and just get your take on it. I don't know if you've seen this. There's a, I watch a lot of internet, so there's a there's a clip of um. Penn Jillette. Have you seen Penn, Penn Jillette talking about, okay, hardcore atheist. He, um, you know, he's a magician, him, uh, Penn, um, Penn and Teller, uh, hardcore atheist. They got videos debunking the Bible and saying how, how believing the Bible is lunacy and it doesn't make sense. And there's whole, and so he's got all this stuff, right? But there's a video where he went out uh, and did a show and somebody came up to him after the show and the guy knows he's a hardcore atheist he's like actively attacking the bible and attacking christians with his with his stuff and uh very arrogant with it has his own podcast all that so this guy comes up to him and he knows his position situation and uh he said hey i want to you know i enjoyed your show i want to i want to give you something and um he said he gave him a bible it was a little green gideon's pocket bible he gave him a bible and he said uh you know, if if you find if you find time to read it, you know, I want you to check it out. My number's in there if you have any questions. And he just kind of shared the gospel with them just for a minute. And Penn, being this um, aggressive atheist, you know, um, he said it touched his heart. Um, not that he's for uh, proselytizing what you believe and trying to force it down people's throat, but this guy actually believed in in the in in that Bible. That guy was concerned for Penn's uh, eternal salvation. And many evangelical Christians would tell you that they believe in, in, in hell. They believe that, you know, if, if you die without Jesus, you, you're going to spend eternity in hell. They, the majority of Christendom believes that. But they're, they're not active in, in, in telling people. If right. I believe that, there was a point where I did believe that. And guess where I was at? I was downtown at the nightclubs preaching on the corners 10 to 10 to four in the morning telling people turn from your sins if you know that i'm fixing to drive this car off the cliff and you just look at me and turn your head i don't think you either one you don't believe it or two um you're one of the most heartless individuals that ever existed that you're gonna let let me drive off a cliff or drive into a tree and you not say anything about it and you saying something can, can prevent me from from doing it people should be frantic on the street corners begging people to come 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 to jesus and there's people who are i have friends who, who do that and they they've given their life over to missions because they believe that they they do but i think that uh i think that either like i said most evangelical christians either don't really believe in hell or they're heartless i mean if we get down to it you know your pride's in a way fear of rejection i'm scared to talk to people all of that that should be out the way if i'm thinking to die and go to hell for all eternity all eternity forever i'm gonna burn in hell forever and you're gonna let me do that isn't that something it is something and uh yeah we most christians don't believe in hell um they can't acknowledge it though because you know that's very counterculture uh because if we did we would be doing exactly that we're beating the doors down you know what i believe instead we're to love it out of people uh i worked at flint's community schools uh when i was at northwestern high school one of my students was a emo kid and he was atheist didn't believe in god and we talk and he'd bring up god because he knew i was a preacher and uh He's like, we talk, ah, oh, Mr. Shady, you know, I don't believe in that crap. It's okay that you do. You're straight. Yeah. But, <laughs> but one day toward the end of the year, he came in my office and he was in tears. He was devastated. He's like, Mr. Shan, I don't know how I'm going to make it through the day. Like, what's going on? His best friend down in uh, Houston, Texas, overdosed. She was in intensive care. She was brain dead. Uh, they were waiting to decide if they were going to harvest organs, talking to the family. And I let him talk for him uh, a while. And I said, Jesse, it sounds like you're in this horrible place and, you know, hopeless. And he said, yeah. And I said, well, there's one who loves you and cares. And I told him about some of the things that I've seen God do. And I said, you know, all you need to do is pour out your heart to him. And he's like, I can do that. I'm like, well, I'll do that with you. He came in three hours later in tears. They were signing the paperwork. 
and his friends sat up in bed and started talking. She was raised from the dead. It didn't take a sinner's prayer. It didn't take me trying to convince him. He realized on that day that there's a God. There's only one thing that will bring people into God, and that's love, because that's who he is. And that's what the world needs to see, and that's what the world needs to see in Christians. Yeah. I think this, the scriptures are true when it says that God's goodness shall lead men unto repentance. Yeah. His goodness, not how how you've messed up and you've ruined your life and you've ruined the, the lives of your family and, and things like that, that people are already dealing with. They already, most of them know this stuff and we feel like we have to reiterate and tell them that they're mess ups, you know, but it's, I think if we share his goodness and that is tangible, I mean, that it's not a fairy tale, that it's not a theory or a doctrine, that it is real, it is life giving and the, the, the scriptures, uh, that, that book is alive. That book is telling the, the story of Jesus, but it's telling our story that we can read those scriptures and it's like a mirror revealing unto us who we are. And it tells the deepest, darkest secrets of our hearts. And, and, and we see ourselves when, when, when we read that thing. Um, it, it's alive. It's it's the real deal. It's not a theory that somebody convinced me to become a Christian. Like I've experienced it. And that's one thing that I've kind of been noticing too. Like a lot of um maybe more the like the, the Baptist type of, you know, reform people, they, they kind of share the gospel from a place of believe in my encounter, believe in the one who came before us and, or God touched me when I was 13 and I met him and they want you just to kind of, uh, believe that gospel and just get a agreement and come to their church and become a disciple and those things. They want to get you into, to their, their, to the kingdom essentially but it's off of their revelation of of god or their you know their revelation of jesus i think that he wants to encounter all of us that it's something tangible that we all can have an encounter every single one of us and he wants to reveal his love and and and, and show us the, the you know um uh, grace and, and mercy and truth in a, in a tangible way not in theory oh i know i'm forgiven yeah no but you can feel it it's a love that we know we're loved but in the presence of god you can feel his love and it's just it, it's tangible man it's the most euphoric feeling it's the the height of spirituality um nothing trumps this i've been in, in a part of and studied most of the religions out there they don't have nothing on this this is tangible for, for everybody and you don't all you have to do is just simply come come and live that's it amen Tom, thank you for coming on the show, man. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed hanging out with you. Um, we'll have to do it again sometime, maybe get, get into like a roundtable discussion with some other people. But uh, thank you for coming on and hanging out with me. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me. Great being here. All right, brother. God bless. Thank you. God bless. Bye. Tom Shannon, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. I've been crying a lot on my podcast lately, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold the tears back. I just get emotional. We, we talk about the grace of God, you know, universal reconciliation. Did Jesus die for all? I think he did, man. I, I believe in the grace flood. I believe um, it's just simply declaring the good news, de declaring what, what God has already done. Like I was talking about at the beginning, not that if you're good enough or if you ask him to, he'll forgive you. You're already forgiven. He remembers your sins no more. He throws them as far as the east is to the west. It's not a theory. It's legit. It's the real deal. It's um, it's it's a grace that's empowering us to live for him, a grace that uh, casts out all fear. It's a perfect love, a perfect peace that uh, is for each and every one of us. You don't have to earn this, man. I, I would be the I'd be the first one to be cast out of the kingdom if that was the deal. But it's not. I'm elected, selected, set apart uh, as, as, as unto him. I had a. Uh, I, I did an interview last night on, on somebody's podcast and we we're talking about paranormal stuff and started talking a lot about um, demons, you know what I'm saying? And, and my encounters with demons and the spirit realm and stuff. And uh, the guy was, was asking me, he was just thinking of every question he could ask me, but he eventually asked me, um, have I been tempted to go back to Satanism? Have I been tempted to go back to, to Wicca and witchcraft and those things, which I was uh, involved in at some time? And I told him never once, never once have I looked back and just reminisced and daydreamed to go back to that. Um, but I told him I'm able to go back to those those people and to and to, to get into the, the discussion. I have something to bring to the discussion. I've been on both sides. I've been on both sides and I was a 
I've experienced it and I live to tell about it and I'm sharing my story. I have wisdom for people who are there or people who are thinking about going there and people who are here in Christendom. Um, it's, it's my story and I'm sticking to it, but I haven't fantasized going back with Satan or, or, uh, witchcraft or something like that. My foundation is Christ. Everything that I believe, everything that I bring into, uh, my realm of understanding or, or even research, I'm free to research whatever he brings my way. I, I, and like I said earlier, I try to, um, filter everything through the scriptures, everything through the word. I, and and that, that book is powerful. I've tried to filter everything I, I can through that. And I'll tell you what, there's some interesting stuff in that Bible that people have never even, uh, 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 comprehended. Nobody's teach. There's things in that Bible that nobody's teaching right now. Nobody's ever put two and two together to formulate a picture out of that. That's how deep the scriptures are. That's how deep the the spiritual connection is with with God and, and with, with with the scriptures. Um, but I told him that I've never thought about leaving Jesus or leaving Christianity or whatever the case is. I'm not in church culture. I'm not in Christianity as a religion. I'm in it because I believe in Jesus. I have a relationship with the living God. That's the only thing that probably I agree with most Christians is that uh, Jesus died for me and he and he, he set me free. Um, he is the way. He is the gate. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by him. He is love. He is love manifested into a person. If love became a man and walked the earth, it's Jesus. And that's how we're supposed to, to live. And he empowers us to do that. I've built everything upon that. I've been able to research and I've been able to talk to people, um, people who may in their in their hearts be enemies of God, people who are hurt by Christians or hurt by God because of circumstances and situations. But I've been able to deal with them on a, on, on, on a level where I've been able to, like I say, present Jesus to them, represent Jesus. Um, I've never left them. He's never left me. He told me he'll never leave me nor forsake me. That's that's a promise. It's not a theory. It's a promise. It's the real deal. If you guys listen, he's never left you. He's never fors forsaken you. But I'll tell you this. Um, if you let them tell it, many people in the churches, they'll tell you I left the faith a long time ago. They'll tell you that I left Jesus a long time ago. Um, but I've, ne I've never left them. He's never left me. And, um, and, and you need to understand who you are in Christ. Open, open them scriptures, get in, get into them scripture, scriptures, read it, uh, read it out loud, read it over yourself, understand who you are, because if you don't know who you are, you begin to believe the voices of the naysayers. Oh, he's this. Oh, she's that. Oh yeah. They're into this. Oh, they're into that to this day. I still get it. I still get it. It's not easy. It never becomes, it comes, it becomes a little bit more easier. I can't lie about that, but it's still, it's still there. Like it's still. Um, you know, we all want to uh, have a pat on our back at times. We want to, you know, we want to hear that well done, good and faithful servant. You don't want people that uh, once looked up to you, demonizing you and calling you a devil worshiper. I, I still get it to this day. Maybe it's the sacred geometry. Maybe it's the mushrooms. I don't know what it is. But one thing about it is that um, nobody let me into this group. Nobody uh, exoteric. Nobody on the outside let me in. It was by grace through faith that I became a believer. Uh, that's my foundation. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Everything, everything else I will build on top of it. There's so much to get into and I don't, um, discourage exploration. I think that's, I think that's demonic. You know, some, if you, if your heart feels called to a certain people group or a concept or an idea that you want to study and someone to tell you to stay away from that, that's demonic to me. And I, I don't want to, it's, ex uh, discourage that but when we're talking about the spirit realm when we're talking about entertaining other spirits you de you do have to be careful so um with all of that judgment that i've received over the years i understand that i understand it right i totally un i understand it and so they're justified in that um saying those things against you and, and some of you guys are experiencing this stuff that's why you guys are still listening um over an hour in because you there's something that uh you kind of uh, bear witness with you've been through the same things you've been ostracized you've been ghosted right it's like an excommunication but they don't tell you hey just stay away from that guy don't talk to him be careful and uh you come to find out that th those people don't care about you 
you know, you find people who are who have they'll find atheists who care more about you than, than some of these people in the church. And that it's not to, to step down on the church. It's it's to, to knock them off a high horse or a pedestal. And uh and, and to be like God is no respecter of persons. Why are we? The scripture talks about in the book of Acts, it says God said he would deal with all men everywhere as long as they will repent, whoever, whoever they are, as long as they will repent and turn from their sins. He'll deal with them. It doesn't matter race, creed, nationality, any of it. I believe the scriptures when he says that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. I don't think that's just Christians. I think God is dealing with everybody. Um, if you can't see God in all, then you can't see God at all. And it's learning to hear his voice. In the midst of the trials and tribulations and in, in, the, in the midst of, of chaos, to be able to hear his voice. He's always speaking. If you can't hear it audibly, you can open up them scriptures, man. You can always go there. Um, but there, but there is a, a connection with God that, that we all can tap into. And, if, and if, if you don't have that, that's the point of my podcast. That's the point of reaching out to people who I don't agree with and, and and picking their brain and wanting to hear what they think about these other subjects and, and then referring it back to the Bible, doing what I do, do. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy the conversation. I enjoy the research, but if this is just a theory to you, then you've missed it. Um, this is a song and dance. This is a lifestyle. This is a, 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 a intimate relationship with the creator of the universe who cares about you, man. And if you don't have that, uh, reach out to me if you want that. I get messages all the time. I try my best to respond to the majority of them. Um, people are asking me about they need prayer. You know, they want they want to know if they which ways up, which ways down. Sometimes I know going through that kind of stuff, it it can be hard. So I'm gonna say a prayer just because um, people look forward to it. I get those messages. People love the you know the the final thought. Or the very end where I, I, I say a prayer and a blessing. Some people look at this as their church. You can't go to church and, and talk about this stuff. You can't go to church and be yourself. You have to play the role of a hypocrite. You have to grab a mask, put the mask on, and then you go in and you, you're accepted. We talk about it all the time. If you show up to evangelical churches and you walk through the door and say, Hey, brother, how you doing today? Hey, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. Like it's a... Trust me, I've done it. All my friends have done it. I've been to churches where they do it. But you can't kind of walk in there and be open. How you doing today? Well, I, you know, I've been receiving judgment from you guys. Um, I don't know if I believe in God anymore. Uh, I need a friend. I have no no friends in my life. You can't be open, man. And that's what we're we're trying to tear that tear that down. Uh, that's that's not good. That's not the gospel at all, man. It's about being open with. I don't care about your belief systems. I do. But I don't. It doesn't offend me that you don't agree with me. Well, truth seeker, you're wrong about this. You said that aliens were were angels and you said the Kundalini's the Holy Spirit. Well, you're wrong. I don't care what you believe. I believe it because I, I've experienced it. It's changed my life. Um, and I, I think the reasons you guys believe what you believe is because you've experienced stuff. Something happened. Most of you guys don't believe it just because it's doctrine. You guys have had some type of encounter whether it's been with jesus maybe in years past there's people who have i'm affiliated with who got born again in in in, in the 70s man and they had this, this intimate relationship with jesus and and now they're uh you know sufis or they're now hindus and things like that but something in my voice something in this conversation beckons them to come again and so i just want to pray man i just want to pray over you guys Anybody going through a hard time, anybody, we're talking about hell. If anybody feels like their their soul, their heart, their mind is full of chaos, is in doubt and fear and unbelief, and you don't know how you're going to pay the bills, you don't know what you believe, I just pray right now that in Jesus' name that that grace would empower you, that the love of God would overtake you, and that he would draw you unto himself. That right now, that tangibly, you can feel the love of God. Just as close as taking a breath and then releasing it. Feel the love of God, the peace of God. As you breathe in the Ruach, the Holy Spirit right now, just to encounter you. I thank you for them, God. I pray that you bless them and keep them on the highway to holiness, on the path that you've placed them on. Let them not deviate that path, no matter how hard it may be. It's so easy to step off for a minute or two. It's so easy to try to take a shortcut or 
catch a ride with somebody, but whatever you've called my friends to, that they would stay the course and that you would give them grace that empowers them to do that in Jesus name. Amen. Awesome, man. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I enjoy this stuff and I, I'm so grateful for you guys supporting me and, um, allowing me to do this. I couldn't do this episode. This episode wouldn't exist at all without your donations, man. You guys who are supporting me on Patreon, um, it's helping me so much, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful that you guys believe in the vision, that you guys believe in what I bring to the table, and you're on board with it. If you want to support what I'm doing, head on over to patreon.com backslash truthseeker. There's a link in the description. And, um, and sign up for any level of giving. If all you can do is a dollar, a dollar's a dollar's more than enough. Um, thank you guys. I appreciate that. With that, I'm gonna say peace and shalom. I love each and every one of y'all. We will do it again soon. Peace. Yo, That does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.